Hi everybody. Today we're going to be taking a brief look at displacements inside of LightWave 9. We're also going to be using the APS functionality to give us some control over the amount of pixels per polygons in our displacement as well as some level of detail controls. Uh, let me switch to the perspective view for a moment and you can see our basic setup here. We have a sphere which was imported from Modeler, it's subdivided, and we have an area light illuminating the scene. We're going to be rendering this with uh, backdrop radiosity and raycast shadows turned on, and you'll see that in a moment. Okay, let's bring up the object properties panel. And the deform tab is already highlighted for us, and you can see we have a new item here, and that is called edit nodes. We'll bring that up, and we can see that we have a uh, node flow inside of the object uh, properties now for displacement purposes. In fact, here's our new displacement node. We're going to pipe everything through this. Uh, I'm going to start off with a, a vein shader to uh, generate some shapes, um, basically like a mountain yeah, with some valleys on this uh, little ball of mine. And I'm going to drive uh, some finer degree detail with the crackle node, crackle shader node. And we're going to run that uh, and combine them with an add node so that we add the results together. And uh, then we're going to output the result and combine it with a uh, normal information from a spot node so that our displacements occur from the surface going outwards, uh, in other words using the surface normal. And we're going to pipe that final result into the displacement map because the displacement map requires a vector. We are using this uh, scale vector uh, node here. And that will always be true. We'll always need to get the final result into vector form for the displacement, whether you're doing this type of displacement uh, as I'm showing you now, or a ZBrush style displacement, which we'll show you in another video. Okay, let me close that down. And I'm now going to activate the, uh, the node flow of what we've just created. And you can see a very low resolution version here. Uh, and that's reflected in this display subpatch level. So if I turn that down to 1, for example, um, we see a lower resolution. Or if I turn it up to 5, for example, we see a higher resolution. For my purposes, I typically work with about 2, as that gives me my relative spac spatial information that I need, but not the extra overhead of extra polys that I really don't need to work with in my UI. OK, I've got a maximum set to 2 pixels per polygon, and I'm going to control that with a, um, a gradient. And uh, basically, we're going to use the distance to camera value here. And you can see what I've got set up. I've got a value of 2 at the extreme end and a value of 10 um, at the other side. And um, we'll close that down now. And the other thing that I'll show you while we're here is I'll bring up the surface editor and just give you a peek at the shading network that we've also set up. Um, just because uh, you'll see the final result, you can understand that too. Um, I'm basically using two uh, FBM nodes driving the foreground and background color of the same veins node that I copied from that uh, displacement tab, by the way, and pasted into here. And then I'm just driving color and bump. Okay. All right, let's get rid of that, and we'll hit F9 to render. And as you can see here, um, the process is beginning. We have uh, about 330,000 polygons that APS has generated. All right, so we're back, and we can see the final result. Um, we've rendered this in roughly 43 seconds, and uh, let's take a look at the final frame. Uh, we've got a lot of nice detail here, especially in the front, uh, uh, catching those shadows uh, real well. and. Uh, uh, looking pretty good. Now we can. Uh, now that we've rendered that image, um, I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit on the camera here. You can see we've got a little 10 frame animation. And uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and render this up now and uh, take a look at the final result. Okay, and we're back. And you can see that we've got about 2.5 million polys in this scene. And uh, it rendered in a little over 3 minutes. You can see we've got a lot of nice filigree detail uh, filling in the gaps here and uh, some pretty interesting stuff going on visually uh, much more uh, uh, resolution now than we did in the uh, version from from the previous camera position okay that concludes this demonstration of displacements in lightwave 9 as well as uh, APS uh, level of detail settings thank you for your attention and we'll see you in another video yeah.